Good evening. This is the regularly scheduled meeting of the Kettering City Council. Today's date is March 22nd, 2022, and we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to open with a brief invocation. Dear Lord, thank you for your abundant blessings in surrounding us with stewardship and a supportive community in Kettering. We thank you for the ability to engage in useful work and for the honor of bearing these important responsibilities. We are grateful for your boundless love for all of us. Please continue to give us the strength and compassion with which to serve and grant us the wisdom to make appropriate decisions. Help us remain humble and grateful for the opportunity to lead. Guide this council so that we may work in harmony while serving our citizens with integrity and purpose. Allow us to fulfill the responsibilities entrusted in us by our residents. Let us also pray for peace in the Ukraine. Protect those whose lives are being torn apart by the war and provide sustenance and safety for all refugees, especially innocent children. It is in your most blessed name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. I'd like to recognize Miami Valley Communication Council TV operator, Mike Sperani. Mike, thank you for your assistance. I think you're back there. Okay, great. Okay. Um, I, I would like to call on Mrs. Fisher for a motion to approve the minutes. Your Honor, I have reviewed both the council meeting and the workshop minutes for March the 8th, and I find them in order, and I move for their approval. Second. The motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments? Hearing none, call the roll. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Kleepas? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Duke? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. We have no proclamations or special presentations for tonight, nor do we have any public hearings. Um, I would like to, um, at this point, to call on anyone in the audience. I don't believe there is anyone there um, for comments. Each speaker is limited to five minutes. Speaker must state their name. Okay. Right. This, this is regarding public comment on legislation. Anyone wishing to speak before council with comments or new information about the legislation on tonight's agenda may do so at this time. Each speaker is limited to five minutes. Speakers must state their name and address. Comments should be addressed to council. If you have comments they are not about, that are not about the legislation on tonight's agenda, there will be an opportunity for those to be heard later in the meeting. We obviously do not have anyone who wishes to speak tonight, so we will move on in the agenda. I'd like at this point to do ordinances in second reading and I'll call on Mrs. Fisher. Your Honor, I do have an ordinance um, to provide for mutual agreement for the adjustment of the boundaries between the cities of Kettering and Oakwood, Ohio. It is requested by the city manager's office and I move for approval. Second. Okay. Let's see. Steve. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this ordinance and second reading this evening will provide for um, corporate boundary adjustments in three small locations along the north side of West Dorothy Lane, on portions of Ridgeway Road and on Fairmont Avenue. Uh, all three adjustments are very minor in nature and will more clearly define the maintenance boundaries of Ridgeway Road and Fairmont Avenue uh, between us and Oakwood. Uh, additionally, a small portion of the property located at 2765 Ridgeway Road in Oakwood, which is on the northwest corner of uh, Ridgeway and Dorothy, will be moved from Kettering to Oakwood to allow for a more logical corporate boundary uh, along the section of Dorothy Lane. Be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bergstresser. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, seeing none, call the roll. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Kleepas? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Duke? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Okay, we now have resolutions. Uh, let's see, we pick up with uh, Mr. Kleepas. Mr. Kleepas? Thank you, Your Honor. I have a resolution authorizing the city manager to contract for umpires and related services for the 2022 softball season. 
The estimated cost is $24,500. The funds are available. It's requested by Parks, Recreation, Arts Department move for approval. Second. Okay. Mr. Sweetman. Thank you, Your Honor. This resolution will allow us to contract with uh, softball umpires for the 22 season, as well as the site schedulers that are associated with the softball season. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Sweetman? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Mr. Kleepas? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Duke? Yes. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing the use of competitive bargaining and negotiated quotes to contract for executive search firm services. This is being requested by City Council. The estimated cost is $30,000 and there is no amount budgeted. I move for approval. Second. Mr. Schwedeman. Thank you, Your Honor. This resolution will allow you to contract uh, for search services related to the replacement of the city manager position. Uh, the estimated cost for that search is $30,000, and a supplemental appropriation will be uh, requested later in the agenda. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Um, anyone have any questions of Mr. Schwedeman? Seeing none, please call the roll. Mrs. Hall. Yes. Mr. Scott. Yes. Ms. Duvall. Yes. Mr. Duke. Yes. Mrs. Fisher. Yes. Mr. Kleepas. Yes. Mayor Lehner. Yes. Your Honor, I've got a resolution to make supplemental appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures of the City of Kettering, State of Ohio, for the fiscal year ending 31 December 2022. Uh, estimated cost $192,000 and requested by the Finance Department. Move for approval. Second. Let's see, that's Mr. Schwedeman. Thank you, Your Honor. We have two items for the supplemental this evening. The first is the appropriation of the $30,000 for the RFP related to the search firm. And the second item is $162,000, which makes a correction of a previous item uh, before City Council. Uh, the engineering department is purchasing a utility truck uh, with a bucket in 2022. Our March 8th, 2022 legislation uh, erroneously had that for public service departments. So this is not a, an increase in supplemental funding. It's a change in the account number related to that. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Do we have any questions? I see none. Call the roll. Mr. Scott. Yes. Ms. Duvall. Yes. Mr. Duke. Yes. Mrs. Fisher. Yes. Mr. Klee Yes. Mrs. Hall. Yes. Mayor Lehner. Yes. Now move to ordinances in first reading. Ms. Duvall. Your Honor, I have an ordinance to levy special assessments for the construction and repair of curbs, sidewalks, drive approaches, and related appurtenances for the Marshall Road resurfacing to East David to South Court Project, City Project Number. 02-120H. This is being requested by the engineering department. I move for approval. For, oh, I'm Three sorry. I apologize. <laughs> okay. um, uh, Mr. Bergstresser. No, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this is an ordinance on first reading uh, to levy assessments uh, for repairs on curbs, sidewalks, and drive approaches as part of a project that was completed on Marshall Road last year from East David Road to the South Corporation Limit with Washington Township. Uh, we have completed the uh, advertisement period uh, for this project or for the assessments. Uh, we received no objections to the, to the assessments. Uh, residents uh, affected by this project will have until August 5th, uh, 2022 to pay cash. If they choose not to, uh, the assessment bill will be placed on their tax roll, property tax rolls uh, beginning in January of 2023. Be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Bergstresser? Okay. Move to the next one. Your Honor, I have a special assessment for construction and repair of curbs, sidewalks, and drive approaches and related appurtenances for 2021 Curb, Sidewalk, and Drive Approach Program, City Project Number 05-121, requested by the Engineering Department, first reading. Okay, Mr. Bergstresser. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this ordinance in first reading is uh, essentially identical to the previous ordinance. Uh, except is for the 2021 uh, curb sidewalk and drive approach repair program uh, that was completed last year. Be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Okay, seeing none, please first reading. Next one. Uh, I have an ordinance, ma'am, to amend the text of various sections of the City of Kettering Zoning Code 
Um, and it is uh, first reading and it is requested by the Planning and Development Department. First reading. Okay. Mr. Schwederman. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this ordinance in first reading is related to a text uh, amendment to the City of Kettering Zoning Code. Uh, staff presented the amendments to the Planning Commission and Planning Commission recommended adoption to City Council. City Council held a public hearing at its previous Council meeting regarding these topics. Again, it is an ordinance in first reading uh, and we'll come back to you as an ordinance in second reading and for a, vote, and for a motion. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Does anyone have any questions of Mr. Schmidt? Okay. See none. Thank you very much. We'll now move to certifications and petitions. Uh, we do have one certification. John. Your Honor, we have one certification this evening. Planning Commission is recommending approval of PC 22-002 zoning map amendment. A public hearing regarding this request will be held on Tuesday, April 12, 2022 at the Kettering City Council meeting. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll now move to the manager's report and for community update. Mr. Schwedeman. Thank you, Your Honor. We have a few items for you this evening. Uh, first is uh, just a reminder to everyone that the City of Kettering is working towards uh, filling out the uh, 2022 phrase season. Tickets can be purchased at the Phrase Fanfare store located at Town & Country or at etix.com or you can charge by phone at the number on the screen. So, late breaking news. Uh, we were supposed to have a statewide <laughs> siren test at 9.30 tomorrow. Uh, how, or at 9.50 tomorrow. However, due to uh, impending Adam. weather conditions uh, <laughs> yes. tomorrow, we are not going to have a statewide siren test so that folks don't think it's a test when it might actually be something they should pay attention yeah. to. So uh, no, no siren test uh, tomorrow. Uh, wanted to get that out. Our uh, very popular compost and mulch uh, program will be uh, back again this spring. Starting April 11th, we will have supply of both compost and mulch at our yard uh, uh, pickup site, mulch pickup site on uh, at 2101 East Troop Road uh, by our uh, park over at Indian Riffle. Very popular program. I'm sure there will be lines on the first day. Uh, the Affordable uh, Connectivity Program, just wanted to share this with you and with our residents. This is uh, information uh, made available to us for groups uh, related to Spectrum Connectivity. So Spectrum being the vendor for connectivity, uh, they have qualified for this Affordable Connectivity Program. To get more information on whether you qualify for that uh, program, you would go to uh, www.acpbenefit.org uh, to check for your eligibility um, for reduced and up to free uh, services. Recently, we have begun the Minority Business Microenterprise Program, um, and this is offered uh, to our uh, businesses and entrepreneurs throughout the community for a grant of either uh, from 500 to $5,000. Uh, the unique thing about this program is it also comes with a requirement to attend three of our four classes uh, that will help folks uh, understand uh, what's involved. Um, that started uh, last couple weeks ago. Uh, we had our first class and just using this slide tonight to continue to advertise uh, that program. And thanks to our community development folks um, and Ms. Shrimp for helping run some of those classes. The city income tax filing deadline has not changed. Uh, so our deadline is still uh, will be April 18th this year um, and residents can get their taxes prepared for them by simply coming to our tax division um, between 8 and 5 Monday through Friday here at the Government Center Complex at 3600 Troyer Road. They can get forms on the website as well or pick up forms here at the building uh, to complete at home. Uh, no appointment is necessary for the preparation of those returns if you bring your tax documents with you. Again, the deadline for filing is April 18th, 2022. And I'll just remind everybody that we are a mandatory filing city. So even if you don't owe, uh, you still have a requirement as a resident of Kettering to file your taxes. There are some exceptions to that, but call our tax division for those exceptions. And I believe, Your Honor, that is all I have for you this evening. I'd be happy to answer any other questions. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. Um, I have one. Uh, the city, uh, the income tax, the city will help anyone prepare their taxes? Now, there's no age limit on that or anything? 
That is correct. Uh, any resident who would like to come in and get their taxes prepared by our staff uh, can do so. Again, no appointment necessary, eight to five, Monday through Friday. Okay. The earlier, the better, I would say that though. <laughs> if you don't wanna wait in line, come soon. And that's here at the city building, not at Latham? No, that? City so friends. that's a great question, Councilman Klepas. Uh For city tax returns, you can come to our tax division and get your city tax returns completed. We also have, um, in partnership with AARP, tax services at the Charles I. Latham Senior Center where uh, volunteers will prepare your tax returns in total, federal, state, uh, and local at that site. That's by appointment only. Uh, I don't know, frankly, if there are any appointments still available. That is the hottest ticket in town. It literally shuts down our phone system uh, when those appointments start booking. So, okay. thank you. thanks, Mark. Um, at this point, if there's anyone in the audience who wishes to come forward and um, speak on non-legislative non matters, um, they may do so at this point. There's obviously no one here to do that. So we will hear city council reports and start with Mrs. Fisher. Yes, ma'am. So I'm uh, happy to report that my husband and I volunteered at the Big Hoop Law, which is a great uh, NCAA first four um, celebration that was downtown. It um, is a great way for us to welcome others that are coming into our communities to uh, support the basketball games, and it's a great economic search to our city and others, and it was great to be a part of that regional event. That's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Kleepas. Uh Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Kettering England, or I think uh, a lot of folks like that, Kettering England has been a uh, sister city with Kettering, Ohio since uh, 1956. Uh, for the last few years since I've been the council liaison uh, with our sister city committee, uh, there hasn't been a lot of activity going on with Kettering England. Uh, we've, we've got the initial uh, word from them um, in the last couple of weeks there has been some individual correspondence going on that uh, as they put in their letter, the sister city committee in Kettering, England has folded, is what they said. So uh, we will be, Al Fullenkamp, who's our chair of sister cities committee, and I will be working with the city and the law department to formalize the, our city's next steps, which probably will be including taking down some signs at various entry points in the city. So we're sorry, to, we're sorry to hear that. It wasn't uh, uh, kind of a surprise. Uh, like I said, it's been pending for some time. And lastly, uh, when you have a choice and you want to go shopping and you have a choice and there's a Kettering facility, go to that Kettering business. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. This is Hall. I don't have an update for today. Okay. Mr. Mayor Lehner, I have no update for this evening. Okay. Ms. Duval. I appreciate you guys getting to me faster. <laughs> uh, lots of good news from the Board of Community Relations um, this month. The Stay Put program that helps with rental assistance has helped 541 clients. And my understanding is that some of the people who have participated in that program have really touched the staff. So it's just been a wonderful, wonderful program from everything I've heard. And I'm so grateful we have that. And the utility program is coming soon, I believe. I don't know that I have a firm date. I can tell you, though, the name of it, stay on instead of stay put. How cute is that? <laughs> Um, our Juneteenth celebration is coming up June 20th at Poland Farm, 1130 to 1. Uh, tickets will be available online and also in person, I believe, at the Government Center. I'm not sure about that. We will have food, speakers, and music, and we are really excited to have our first event, and Mayor Lehner will be speaking, and it's going to be good. We've even, uh, we've got our MC, Amy Jarosik. Pretty oh. exciting. So, <laughs> anyway, that's all I have. Okay. It sounds like Board of Community Relations has been pretty busy. That's A lot of stuff see. going on. Um, Mr. Duke. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, 
Last week on the 10th, uh, we had our Kettering Leadership Academy uh, Police and Fire Day. And uh, I want to personally thank our chief who's here this evening and our, our fire chief. Uh, but uh, as always, Chief Prosman did a, a, an excellent job in, in guiding the class through what they do. Uh, one exercise that they go through that is always very important to the class is a simulation where they are in the role of the police officer and have to decide instantaneously whether they should fire their weapon uh, or not fire their weapon in the event of a police auto stop. And I will tell you that it is an extremely moving experience for these students. Uh, you realize just how instantaneous police decisions must be made on a small amount of information and how difficult and how tragic it can be. Uh, so it's great, great learning experience. I, I, and our police and fire spend a lot of work with these, uh, with our 15 students and it was, it was really a great experience. Um, I'm gonna take a personal privilege. I was uh, uh, privileged to be at a meeting last week um, where I, I got to spend half an hour on a live feed with the mayor of Lviv, Ukraine. And um, to help orient you, Mariupol is in the eastern side of Ukraine, and that community is the one that is just about bombed out, if you will, and is in danger of falling. Uh, Kiev is more in the central, and Lviv is in the western part of the country. The mayor of Lviv, shared with our group that the city is just less than a million people. And as of last Sunday, uh, he had almost 300,000 refugees in his community that came from other parts of Ukraine trying to get into Poland. And he fully expected by this time now, it's been four or five days, they would be close to half a million refugees. Imagine if you live in a community of less than a million people and probably 500,000 new residents came to your community. And this is primarily women and children because the men are staying back to defend their community. And so I, I simply wanted to share the, the passion that, that this mayor was able to convey to other mayors that were in, and other elected officials that were in the group I was in uh, and and he, he said one thing that stuck with me, and, and I think it's helpful for all of us as we frame and try to figure out how, how do we process what's going on in Ukraine. He simply said, remember Americans, we are now going through what you went through during your revolution. We are fighting to save our democracy. You were fighting to create and save your democracy. Uh, it was very powerful. So if you have the ability uh, to work with those folks that are trying to help refugees, whether it's through your church or through private donations or whatever you can do, I firmly believe it will come maybe within a month or so. I think we're going to be receiving refugees here in America. Uh, they're starting to come, those that can get out by plane are getting out. But I do think we're going to see more in the not too distant future. Uh, Poland can't take any more, Estonia, I mean, these countries are just packed. And, and we're looking at maybe four million refugees from this horrible war. So I just wanna share that. Um, if you're a praying person, pray, pray for those folks. Uh, it's, it's a horrible situation. That's all, I wanted to share that, Mayor, thank you. Take thank you, Mr. Duke. Um, do you know of any local organization or group that you could contact if you were interested if we do get a surge of refugees here. Save the Children has been doing things like that and others on, on council may know of some. Uh, Ms. Ms. Hall, do you have some? I was gonna save this for the, our ne my community update next time, but um, I'm starting a fundraiser with some local Ukrainians and there are two Ukrainian groups that have uh, fundraisers uh, humanitarian organizations that are sending aid directly to Ukraine. So more to come on that and how we can, as a community, support local Ukrainians through this uh, event. Thank you very much. Um, I think it's, we'll all be interested in hearing more. 
And there have been articles, an article in the paper today about a young woman, a, 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 a nurse or a, a medical person that was going to Ukraine to help, and, and there were some sources there. So I, I think you get online, make sure it's a reputable place that you're either donating to. Uh, we asked the mayor of Lviv, what do you need? And it, it ran everything from bulletproof vests and helmets to diapers and bottled water and food. I mean, the, just imagine that many people. So on the one hand, we've got to defend our city. On the other hand, we have to save lives. So it's a tough situation. Right, Ms. Duval. Uh, Qantas International has set up a fund that anybody can donate to, and the money will go directly to Qantas and Ukraine, who are helping mm -hmm. directly with the people. So that's an, also an option. Okay, great. Thank you. Anyone else having comments on that? All right. Um, in my report tonight, I just want to say that the Council is about to embark on a um, retreat. Uh, we do this periodically. Uh, this is, um, it's been a while since we've had one, and there's no greater need right now um, for the city as we're coming out of the whole COVID crisis. Um, lots of programs need to be sort of reevaluated, looked at, see where we are, where we're going with it. And this council, a lot of new people, um, going to spend some time getting to know each other. I'm looking forward to that and um, coming up with a list of things that we need to do right away. And uh, I think we're, we're all kind of in line that we'll move from a retreat to a strategic plan. Um, a strategic planning process takes quite a bit of work, quite a bit of time, but it's, it's, it's overdue. And I think we're all looking forward to, to starting with that. Uh, there certainly is a sense in the air that, that the city is getting back to normal. Um, I've got a request for a meeting to talk to the holiday at home folks. I've got, we've got a full schedule um, at the phrase this year. Uh, the Tree Fest is back. We're adding a new uh, celebration with the Juneteenth celebration. Um, there's a lot of excitement and, and eagerness, I think, on the part of people, even in the face of uh, the war that we're all standing back and just watching with horror. Um, but there's a local sense that we're rising. So with that, um, I have no further business to come before the council and we're adjourned. <laughs>